absolutely right to prevent oppression, but it may not be possible always to stop an oppressor. It may not be possible to stop oppression by a given method or at a given time. In the case of Palestine, we can be as outraged as we like, and it's right to be outraged, and we should be outraged by what we're witnessing, because it's, it's so beyond the pale. There have been more bombs dropped on a very small 26 by five mile city than were dropped on Dresden during World War II. The Nazis bombed London for one year. They destroyed 60% of the city. They killed 40,000 Londoners. We've seen in two months, over 20,000 people are now dead. These, most of these are women and children. Because we know that 50% of Gaza is women and chil children, that is children under the age of 18. It's a very young population. So we have to recognize that it's not reasonable to think that the unjust, being unjust, will lend an ear to our pleas for justice. So if the principle is sound, the question becomes one of means. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary to suffer in silence. Sometimes it's, that's the means of survival. But it doesn't mean it's final. My ancestors were Irish. The Irish lived under the tyranny of the English for 700 years. That's a long time to live under a tyrant. In, in, in Ireland now, they, they don't speak Gaelic. They're relearning Gaelic because their, their, their tongues were cut out for speaking Gaelic. That's why they speak the English language. And that's true for the Celtic people in Scotland as well. My great-grandfather came from the Scottish Highlands to Canada, and he built a monastery in Alexandria, Ontario, there's a newspaper article about it, but one of the things that he mentioned was it was a blessing to be in a free land knowing that his own ancestors suffered the persecution for being Catholics for centuries in Scotland. So you have to keep your wits about you. You have to give yourself a chance to have a chance. The Prophet told us that some people are like hard ground that absorbs no rain. In other words, they're just not open to guidance. And for that reason, it makes perfect sense to say, La ikraha fideen. You can't compel people to be religious. Religion comes from a desire in the heart. If you try to compel people, it doesn't work. It only produces hypocrites. But we have to deal with those people anyway, sometimes by simply avoiding their poison, or at least trying, avoiding trying to be affected by the poison as best we can. To the extent that saving our own selves is in fact preventing oppression, like the Palestinians say, a sumud wujud, that the very uh, act of just being somid, in the midst of the oppression, that is the wujud sumud, that your, your presence there is your sumud, your resilience. Overt deviance sometimes works, but it can also backfire, especially when people are set in their ways or they have something of interest to say.